Welcome, this is Shakti Karola Nevron, to my weekly power, which is an astrological forecast for the coming week. So I have been an astrologer for almost 40 years now, so I do know from experience how much our outer world is reflecting the inner world. So the inner world means our consciousness and how we filter and how we uh, make decisions out of those uh, insights and uh, judgments we make. So hi Paul, good to see you. So uh, just by knowing kind of the general uh, tendencies of the coming week, what the celestial energies are really about and what is the low end of possibilities and what the high end possibilities are really goes a long way in navigating those waves. Uh, I live on Maui, Hawaii, and here any child knows that you can't fight a wave. You can learn how to surf it. So with the celestial waves up there, it's kind of a similar thing. You can use the energy, you can have the force of the wave in the back pushing you forward, but you can't really fight it or overcome it. So the, the weekly power forecast for you is uh, my attempt to, to pass the bug of my passion for astrology and and to get you prepared and ultimately to help you to strive in your life and to live a fuller, more meaningful, more self-expressive life from ultimately your your soul perspective. <laughs> okay, so um, because we do this weekly, uh, I'd like you to give me a sentence or word of how your last week was so we can create a little tribe here, a little connection, see how we all unfolding with uh, consciousness we, we're gaining here. So just let me know one word or one sentence how your, your week was. <clears throat> So, the coming week is kind of a, a strong and important one because we have a full moon coming up there. I did make an extra video just about the full moon because it's such an important one. But uh, because we're moving towards that this week, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about it today. And uh, then uh, I always try to find kind of the main idea for the week, the, the, the overall theme and uh, talk a little bit about that which this week will be connected with the full moon and then I will go through all the days and look at the, the fast moving moon and, and how the moon connects with the other planets and what that means for you. So first we're going to do a little, little bit general preparation and then we're going to get very specific. Uh, in case you haven't been following me yet, uh, you want to sign up for my newsletter on my website MauiAstrologyReading.com so there is a, a, a link up there to make it easy because this way I can keep you in the loop for all the forecasts and, and events I'm having coming up so you don't leave it to coincidence that you see me or find me somewhere. And also you will get a, a gift, you will get, when you go to my website and sign up, it will walk you through a, a program where you can put in your astrological uh, information, birth date, time and place of birth, and then you will get your chart, and that chart will uh, come with a, a, a love stone report. And that is a, a gemstone which is really helping you to heal your heart, to open your heart, to feel that connection and maybe to even get more lucky and, and expressive in, in the realm of relationships. So, uh, so make sure you, you do that if you haven't done it yet. And uh, also please like my videos and leave me a comment so this way I don't have the feeling I'm talking into that empty space there. <laughs> uh, so we have kind of a dialogue here. I, I really like this about this live format that it gives you the chance to ask questions even after the live I will 
come back to the comments and, and answer your questions. But please don't ask me if you're moving, if, if uh, your, your son is going to marry. These kind of questions I can't know, even if I would know the whole chart. These are questions which aren't written in your chart. These are also potentials out there. But the more you know about your chart and all these outer influences, so more choices you have and and then it's up to you if 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 you're gonna move and from which inner place that that's happening okay so today uh i want to talk about the upcoming full moon in aries uh, for several reasons first of all the full moon is uh, what we call a super moon a super moon is happening four or five times a year i believe and it's called a supermoon when it's kind of the closest to the Earth. And we all know from the tides and the oceans that whenever the, the moon gets full or close to the Earth, it really influences the tides. And it also influences our uh, energy body, our, our electromagnetic field. So that's why so many people are strongly impacted by the full moon. The cats are out all night and hauling and uh, uh, there's more uh, drunkenness in public and, and tumult. And so it's kind of we have a shorter fuse with the full moon. Everything is kind of reflected stronger because that's what the moon does. It reflects the sun and the energy of the sun. In our chart, the moon represents our inner world, our filter, yes, <laughs> lunatics as well. Uh, the moon represents that filter to the, to the world and, and our emotional attunement. And uh, in general, we can say our inner world, symbolized by the moon, gives us a lot of information, what we need in order to be happy, what we need in order to feel safe. So uh, the moon in, in your birth chart really is uh, giving us a lot of important information. And then the moon throughout the months going once through the whole zodiac uh, means it's kind of about two, two and a half days in one sign is moving very fast, but nevertheless, the moment it's stepping into a new sign, it's kind of strong and impactful, especially when there is a new moon or a full moon happening. So this full moon is happening in Aries, Aries uh, beginning of one circle of evolution in the zodiac, the sign of the warrior, the sign of the pioneer, fire starting into something. So, so it's a very spunky, emotional uh, set point we all experiencing. And then, of course, it's a supermoon, so the electromagnetic field and, and how it pushes onto us is, is very strongly there. So not only that, also this full moon is part of what we call a T-square. So a T-square is an opposition and then those two parts are squaring, so kind of funneling the energy to the tip of the, the triangle. So, so the T-square is uh, here Moon Uranus, on the other side Sun Mercury, and then up here it's Pluto Mars. So if you have been following me for a while, you know that Pluto individually and Mars individually are very strong spunky moments in time but when they line up that's amazing it's strong it holds a, a potential for violence for something cooking up to a certain point and I also think it's kind of interesting that it's happening uh, uh, two weeks before the, or three weeks before the election. And right now we can already feel how the waves are, are going higher and the whole thing with Trump and his debasing of, of women. And I mean, people get very emotional about it, as they should. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, this full moon has a lot of potential for uh, the low end, aggression, violence, things cooking over, strong reactivity of people out there. 
And of course, we as individuals, we have to filter those energies through our individual chart and our set point and our blueprint that chart is, is symbolizing. So let me show you a chart here. Okay. So it work better with the life, but uh, okay, let me see if I can get it smaller for you. Okay, so this is how a chart, this is a chart for uh, when we started the, the, the live uh, webinar here. So, so these were the planets as they are distributed in the zodiac. And you can see here is uh, Mars, Moon, Pluto right now. Uh, so that is the spunk and the energy of the day, which uh, is also happening kind of in a T-square. So Uranus and Sun is in there. But of course, with full moon, it's all accentuated. It's all even stronger. But today we kind of get a taste how that, that full moon is going to unfold. Okay, so this is a chart for a given moment to measure the quality of time, that seeding moment which holds the potential. And as you can tell, there are no forms in the chart, so there are no events. That's why we cannot foretell the future. We can foretell the potential in the range of low-end manifestations and high-end manifestations. So low end manifestations for the Mars Moon Pluto here is uh, to be very reactive today, to be angry, to be activated. Somebody pushes a button and and we blow off. So uh, then we want to correlate that back to our individual chart. So this is my chart, and you can see how outside. These are the planets where they are today. So they're situated outside my birth chart. So, uh, for example, here you can see I have, uh, we all have Neptune 9 degrees in Pisces. And that is uh, in, in an exact square to, to the Venus, my Venus in the first house. So, so Neptune Venus talks all about uh, uh, transcending, bringing things to a higher level. Venus, the goddess of love. So what I'm invited to right now in my life is to really learn about self-love because Venus is in the first house. Really uh, knowing what my needs are and, and the needs of my body. The first house has a strong relationship and connection to the physical body. So that's how we relate back those planets and where they are to our individual chart. And that's how we get more information. And of course, when I do a forecast reading for an individual, uh, I talk two hours about what exactly is going to happen and, and uh, be there as a potential for the coming year. So, but, but this is how it's worked. Okay, back to here. All right, my checklist here. Okay, for those who haven't seen me uh, here, I'm an evolutionary astrologer. So as, as an evolutionary astrologer, I look at everything from that potential of your karmic evolution, from that potential of your soul wanting you to grow into higher levels of consciousness, to heal certain areas in your life, and to become more conscious what is really your karmic destination, where you want to go in this lifetime. And uh, uh, it helps a lot to know about that. So I'm also uh, a the founder of the Master Astrology Academy. So I teach astrology for beginners and from the evolutionary astrology angle. So if you're interested and, and you caught the bug and you want to learn a little bit more about astrology, then you might want to check it out. I, I'm going to put it in the comment box for you uh, where you can go to, to have a look at that. I'm also a published author, so uh, I work with uh, gemstones in ways to 
support and balance and harmonize challenging areas in the chart. So I've actually written a book about it, Jewelry and Gems for Self-Discovery. Mm -hmm. So this is the book. <laughs> and um, yeah, so at the end I will give you the, the gemstone for the week and how you can use that specific gemstone to support you through this big full moon event coming up. Also this week we have Mercury conjunction Jupiter on Tuesday. So there is an invitation to really sort things out, understand things, look at things from a more meaningful, wider perspective. So I think that's a good thing, preparing us for the full moon. And then throughout the week we will have Moon, today it's in Capricorn, then we will have it going through Aquarius, Pisces, Aries and next Sunday Taurus. So these are the mini activations. Okay, so let's see. Um, Okay, I'm going to try to keep it a little more uh, focused today, not as long. It's so easy to get carried away from me because I want to give you so much information and teach you about the marvelous potential astrology holds. So, so today I'm taking an aim to kind of, um, let's get the clock here for that, uh, to, to make it a little bit more con concise. Okay, so moon, moon. Uh, today uh, has this conjunction Mars, Pluto and Capricorn which I showed you on, on the chart. So, so today it's not an easy day. Today you will get a, a, a pre-run of what's going to be even stronger with, with that full moon coming up. So, so we get a taste, an early taste, how we react and how we filter that. So everything I'm presenting here today will be really of utmost interest for you when you have any planets, uh, ascendant, uh, in the signs I'm discussing. So uh, people having planets in Capricorn will have the Pluto-Mars uh, activations there very strongly. Um, people with planets in Aries, uh, this is where the full moon is actually happening. So uh, it will impact all of us, but those people are especially in, in the crossfire and uh, consciousness will, will help you to how to navigate it. So my suggestion for high-end possibilities of the full moon and actually today is that it would be helpful for you to find something in the coming week and after something you feel passionate about because passion is high in Mars. So it's so easy to get frustrated and angry and reactive on the low end side of possibilities but usually when we find something we're passionate about and we don't mind putting the work in and take the action step steps then uh, we feel good and we give the Mars energy, which is just originally just life force energy, which is kind of neutral. So it's up to us how we manifest it, low end or high end. So I really like to ask you, what are you passionate about in your life? What is it worth putting the effort in, uh, learning to do, making a stand for? So I love to watch those uh, competition shows, uh, You Think You Can Dance, uh, The Voice. And what I love about it is those are a lot of young people, but also older people, and they're very passionate about their dancing and their singing and they want to share and there's a lot of hard quality in there. So whenever you are in alignment with that passion, then you are in the flow and life is beautiful and meaningful and and that's when you thrive and in my perspective this is really what astrology has to offer give you that insight and those uh, decisions and those so that freedom of choice to to truly thrive in your life and take the potential which is symbolized in your birth chart to the highest possibility 
and, and there's so many different ways how we can express our birth chart. For example, the, the birth chart of Adolf Hitler, German dictator, was almost the same than the birth chart of Charlie Chaplin. And see how different they expressed, what different forms and manifestations they found to, to express themselves and how they impacted the world with that. So, so consciousness is really the key. That's why I'm still, after almost 40 years, so passionate about astrology, because it's the fastest, more elegant way to gain that wisdom perspective and connect with, with that meaning in your life. So this week, it's really about that, that passion. Where do you have that passion? And then, of course, you have to take action steps. I mean, just having a vision and an idea is just not good enough. You need to, to make the effort with Mars. You need to push the energies into the, the direction you, you want to go. Oh, okay, Paul, Capricorn, your ascendant. So then you will feel that quite strongly today and, and in, the, in the coming week. Okay, so Sunday, tomorrow the 9th, Moon enters Aquarius. So Aquarius is the revolutionary, the outsider, the one who is a little bit outside the, the mainstream. Uh, usually these are the people who become forerunners, they bring a different perspective to the table. So I have my moon in Aquarius, so I, I think that's why I'm actually an astrologer and I find this perspective uh, very enriching and quite normal. <laughs> so, so I will feel uh, this moon tomorrow very strongly because my, my birth moon is in that sign. So tomorrow is definitely a day to break the mold, do something different, uh, step out of uh, my normal, usual way of, of behavior. And, of course, that's out there, the invitation for all of us. But if you have any planets in, in Aquarius, that will be even stronger in, in the forefront of your consciousness and experiences. Okay, then Monday the 10th, we have a, a nice moon trine to Mercury and Jupiter. Uh, I rarely talk about trines and sextiles because the most pushy, stronger aspects, which are just energetic connections between the principles symbolized by the planets. Uh, so usually there's so much strong action going on that I don't get really to the sextiles and uh, trines, but uh, tomorrow, it's uh, su Monday, we have Saturday today, Monday, is kind of quite a day, so that's why uh, we can be more uh, in tune and more sensitive to, to feel the more subtle energies. So, so Moon trining Mercury opens a, a deeper understanding um, understanding of our inner world, of our needs. Maybe we become more aware how we can nurture our inner child uh, in, a, in a better way. So, so Monday is kind of a, a, a quiet day. Something's building up there. Then Tuesday, the 11th, that Mercury conjuncts Jupiter and that's happening in Libra. So um, Mercury is our intellectual filter, it's how we learn, how we take in information. Jupiter is the king of the Roman gods. Whenever Jupiter is in the picture, we need to expand our wisdom perspective, Mercury. We need to learn, we need to, to expose ourselves to some kind of culture shock. We need to, to integrate that there is no absolute truth. There's only that moment in time of a certain perspective we are able to hold, depending on our state of consciousness. So, so that's kind of the energy of Tuesday, of really asking those deeper, more meaningful questions. And whenever we have really a good connection with Jupiter, we not only have a more meaningful life where we love to get up out in the morning out of bed, we can't start to uh, can't wait to start the day, 
but uh, we usually then also get more uh, successful and 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 ride the wave and and the flow it's symbolizing. So the Jupiter is in Libra, the relationship sign. So things might become clear in your relationship in uh, uh, the way you connect. Also on Tuesday, the Moon squares Venus. And because Mercury and Jupiter is already in Libra, which is ruled by Venus, so I would say Tuesday is quite a relationship, relational day uh, where we learn something about ourselves in that dance, in that connecting, in that social interaction. And remember, we are social beings. Uh, we we. Uh, need the other, we need the reflection from the world to become more self-conscious. Hi Sheila, good to see you. All right, so that was Tuesday, Wednesday, um, the 12th. Moon enters the next sign, Pisces. And Pisces is the end of one circle of evolution. So the zodiac starts with Aries, goes through all those steps, symbolized throughout the year, through the seasons, and every month something different is happening. So your uh, Aries is the beginning of that circle of life, and uh, Pisces is the end, the integration, the connection to, to something deeper. Uh, if you have been following me, I've been talking about the wave in the ocean, symbolizing who we are as an individual soul, and the top of the wave relates to our consciousness, our sense of self. The uh, belly of the wave relates to our unconsciousness, which is uh, ruled by the moon. And then the, the bottom of the wave, the ocean, which I call the divine or the, the uh, all that is, God, morphogenetic field, however you want to call it, it's all that ultimate consciousness and non-physical dimensions underlying the physical life as we know it. So Pisces connects our consciousness up there to those deeper truths and reality of the non-physical dimension. And even uh, uh, the scientists Nowadays, no. I think the last thing they came to is that they know there are 11 dimensions. So forget about the three-dimensional world. They have proven there are 11 dimensions, which uh, uh, refer to something we can usually not quite grasp with, with our normal senses. So Pisces and the moon in Pisces kind of opens us up for the couple of days it's in there to get those deeper insights and inspirations from the ocean consciousness, from that non-physical dimensions. So I always find that quite uh, exciting and it's a good day to meditate and tune in or paint something or dance or sing. So that those are all good ways to connect to the ocean consciousness and the ultimate reality, which is underlying what we can perceive with our senses. Okay, then uh, also the moon on Wednesday conjuncts Neptune, which is just emphasizing everything I've said because Neptune is a ruler of Pisces. So Wednesday is a, a a good day to meditate, to smell the roses, to walk your dog, you sit out and get inspired. Mm -hmm. Thursday is the 13th, then the moon squares Saturn, conjuncts Chiron, and Mercury squares Mars. So the moon will be a little challenged here with the square to Saturn and the conjunction to Chiron, so it brings in that dimension of healing. Whenever Chiron is, is part of an activation, it sheds a light how we can really take action to heal ourselves. So Chiron is a wounded healer who accidentally poisoned himself and then he, because he was immortal, he couldn't die, so he, he needed to heal himself. What are you going to do? You're in a lot of pain, 
you have to deal with it. So we get a little taste of that on Thursday. A little taste of some wound, some pain, some area we might experience suffering, but we also will get inside how to deal with that. So keep your, your attention open for that on Thursday. There are ways how we can uh, deal with things in a conscious way. Friday, the 14th, the moon enters Aries. So again, the new beginning of a whole new cycle of evolution and growth. And uh, on Friday, we already get the taste of the moon in Aries, but then, of course, it will be strongly emphasized with the full moon then the next day. Um, so also on Friday, that moon is opposing Jupiter in, in Libra. So, uh, yeah, Friday is just already getting us into the gear of what's going to happen the next day. And then, Saturday the 15th, the full moon is in Aries. And uh, I already discussed that in depth in the beginning. So, uh, yeah, hold your hat on your head and uh, just develop that witness perspective. That will really always help with with strong, uh, potentially violent, upsetting uh, forces. So the gemstone of the week, which will help you through those um, excitements, uh, first of all will be the Herkimer diamond, because the Herkimer diamond is a double terminated crystal. So that stone is always good when it's about balancing between plus and minus. So Herkima diamond, whenever there's volatile action in the heavens, you have a bigger stone, you can just have it in your hand, play with it, have it in your pocket, or meditate with it. So gemstones are nice to put on your third eye or on your heart chakra, and, and the energy is kind of implementing into your, your energy body and uh, will lift your frequency. And that will be helpful. But the stone I really wanted to talk about today for the coming week and for that full moon, super moon action is a fire opal. I don't have a, a, a big enough one to show you. But the fire opals you might have seen, there are these orange, red kind of fire opals. They come from Mexico and they have the red and blues deep inside reflecting. So that is a stone which is in its signature Mars, Pluto, Neptune. And then when it's in, in the matrix, in the mother uh, rock, then it has Saturn aspect with it as well. So fire opal is a gemstone which really helps to transform volatile energies. It relates to the three lower chakras, so it's really about transformation. It is about helping to unblock the energy flow in our own uh, physical energetic system. So uh, when I was still ju doing jewelry, uh, I did a lot of pendants actually as, as being worn with a belly chain over your second chakra because that way it would break up those blockages and limitations uh, in our own energy system. So, so for this week, Fire Opal, if you have one, maybe you have a piece of jewelry. Hi Diane, hi Sharon. Uh, so Fire Opal would be, if you have a piece of jewelry, a good piece to wear. If you have a, a, a unset uh, Fire Opal, uh, make sure you have it in your energy field, in your pocket, or you do a meditation with it. So uh, having a piece of jewelry with a fire opal is a wonderful thing. But once in a while you might feel it too strongly. So with opals in general, because they're Uranus, Neptune and Pluto in, as part of their signature, and then depends on the color, you want to make sure that uh, you're really tuned if you still uh, experience that energy beneficial and supportive. Because in a way, having an opal in your field, it's kind of putting the, the foot on the, on the gas. 
But if you have the other foot on the brake, that doesn't work well. But if you're ready for change, if you're ready to let go something, then the opals are wonderful stones to help you in that process of letting go and surrender to what is. So fire opal for this week, but if you have a Herkema diamond, uh, that's a wonderful start. And, and Herkema diamonds are really my favorite because they're so versatile. Okay, my dears, uh, opening up for questions. <laughs> uh, the healer as part of my healing experience. Yeah, that's a Chiron uh, uh, idea. So Chiron actually was already a healer before he got sick. And uh, the story goes that he accidentally poisoned himself and uh, then obviously he was the only one who could deal and had to deal with with all the symptoms because um, he couldn't die so there was no way out. So Chiron is really that connection to we have to deal with something and we are the the best person to, to deal with it because nobody else is going to do it for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think I covered what I wanted to cover. So uh, if there's only one thought you want to keep from today is this idea of tapping into your passion. This will go a long way uh, to, to feel supported, to feel in the, in the high end of, of the energies and the manifestations available to you. So um, also make sure you watch my full moon video where I go a little deeper into things. But I think for the overview for the week we have done good. Okay, my dears, uh, thanks for liking me and always getting back to me. I really appreciate it. And uh, I hope you're going to weather today <laughs> and uh, have a wonderful week, nevertheless. Okay, bye.